I live in an apartment like roughly 15% of the world's population, but I don't live in a big one, or a fancy one for that matter. It's actually a small studio apartment in one of the world's alpha cities. This might be what you call the urban tiny house of today. Tiny space living is a choice that I made for myself that may not be right for you, but I chose this for two reasons. One, my God, rent is high. Oh, have you looked at the market? Jeez, old beat. Two is because I don't really need more space to be fulfilled with where I live. This got me thinking though, with small spaces being, eh, relatively speaking, pretty prominent here on Earth, for usually cost reasons, how would tiny homes and tiny spaces be like in space? And what are the overlaps between the two when it comes to design, implementation, and ultimately living standards in the human condition? Let's find out. Quickly, let's recap. What is living in a tiny home like here on Earth? Well, as you can see behind me, the stereotypical tiny house is something that is built either on wheels or on a foundation. Its square footage is small, usually less than 600 square feet, all the way down to about 80 square feet or an eight by 10 room. Now that, I don't wanna judge, but that's really tiny. I, a queen size bed's gonna eat up most of that. Full size bed, still gonna eat up a lot of that. Twin size bed eats up even too much of that, in my opinion. So why do people choose to live in tiny houses anyway? Well, part of my understanding of the current movement as it currently stands, which has been going for, I believe the better part of a decade now, is really primarily cost. It is viewed to be cheaper to live in a tiny house. Now, there's a lot of moving pieces with this, right? There's the cost of the building, there's the cost of the land, there's the cost of the permitting, cost of the utilities, cost to get the thing to your land in the first place. It's not exactly cheap, and I don't know if anybody's looked at house prices here lately, but whoa oh boy, they're pricey, and they're big. And that kind of leads me to the second reason why people would want to live in a tiny home in the first place, which is because they're small and they are relatively speaking easy to clean and they're easy to take care of and frankly if you're like myself sure maybe I have a couple things like a 3d printer and a desk to work at but I don't need five bedrooms full of nothing that just doesn't make sense to me so those are the two big reasons I can see the third one it eh, kind of rolls into the second which is sustainability and ultimately trying to reduce your impact on the environment so given that we now have a rough understanding of why people would live in a tiny home here on earth why might you also need to live in a tiny home in space and specifically what I'm referring to here is why do tiny spaces go together so well with space exploration. First and foremost, it's mass, baby. Do you know how heavy a house is? Don't Google it, it's really heavy. Secondly, it's mass. Like, I just, I can't keep, I, I, I can't say it enough, it's mass. So, long story short, for anybody who doesn't know, launching something into space is based on how heavy the something is. Great example, the Falcon 9 can launch somewhere in the order of magnitude to be able to return itself eight tons. Okay, fun fact, a house doesn't weigh eight tons. It weighs like 80 tons, not eight, 80 tons. If the house weighs 80 tons and that's okay. So strap nine Falcon 9s together and launch your, you know, frame and timber house into space. Oh wait, you're gonna run into the second issue, which is it needs to be airtight and that you need to have a controlled atmosphere within your home and we're not talking ac versus heat controlled we're talking controlled how much carbon dioxide's in there what is the atmosphere makeup beyond that what's your nitrogen loads what's your other gases load what's the temperature of everything and oh by the way is it holding or losing that atmosphere and how do you replenish it oh <laughs> something nobody talks about is heat we're warm-blooded, we make heat. Our devices make heat. And because of that, you also have to get rid of that heat. And here on Earth, we just blow some air across it and say, atmosphere, you have fun. But in space, we 
can't do that. And that makes it really tricky then to get rid of heat. That's why the space station uses radiators to literally radiate the heat out into space. Space is a harsh, harsh mistress. If you were to launch your stick and frame tiny home, like the one behind me, into space, somehow getting it there in one piece, which would be amazing, by the way, you know, I'd love to see it someday. If it ever happens, comment below what you did. But if you were to get that into space, it would be 300 degrees Celsius on one side and negative 300 degrees Celsius on the other side. And the exterior of that building would have to deal with those extremes. And that's just on top of the atmosphere and on top of the fact that it also would have to weigh basically nothing compared to what it does today. So I step it back, I step it back. Launching small spaces into space or inflatable spaces, which will have its own episode at some point in the future, but launching small, predefined, pre built spaces is probably going to be our best call. And they're not going to be big. You can look at the International Space Station for reference. Those were designed, relatively speaking, to fit within the shuttle's cargo bay. Cool. That just doesn't leave you a lot of room to live. It's only like this big right my apartment relatively speaking is actually wider side to side than the interior of the space station and frankly this place is small <laughs> it's really small so i say all that to say tiny spaces will be required as we at least initially begin to settle space we're not going to get to those grandiose luxury mega mansions in space at least not for some time now, how is space, small spaces, and Earth, tiny homes, relatively speaking, connected? Interestingly enough, there are some major parallels that can be drawn outside of the obvious ones that can't. Specifically, I'm referring to multifunctional spaces, right? Something you see every tiny home video go through is, oh my God, look at X. It can do A, B, F, G. And you're like, what? That table's also a bed and a storage bench and where you put all your batteries? That's cool. And it's that multifunctional, multi-use space that we're gonna have to have in space. Almost nothing can just be what it is. We, not until we're able to launch significantly more mass, we do not have the luxury to have single-use items or at the very minimum, single-use storage spaces or single-use walls or single-use floors. Depending on what gravity environment you're in, you may be able to use the ceiling to eat dinner. But if you're on the moon, you're probably not gonna do that. And you're gonna have to follow some more traditional gravity-led small space ideologies. As we get into the space Winnebago, I'm gonna put that out into the universe. I really hope somebody grabs it. If not, I'm gonna do something with it. Space tiny homes are gonna also have to deal with decor. Uh, the human condition is very interesting. We as humans, we, I don't know, we we like nice spaces. We, we like to have art in our spaces. We like to have walls that are appealing to look at. We, oh, I don't know, like to have windows? I can't tell you how many space designs don't have windows or even panels that could act like windows. Yes, I know, radiation. Yes, I know, the view may be kind of crap. Yes, I know, there's a lot of technical issues to deal with putting a giant hole into a pressurized vessel. I know, but we as humans, I mean, heck, if I'm retiring on the moon, then I want to be able to see what I'm retired to. I want to be able to see what's around me. Yeah, yeah, sure, deep space missions. It's a lot of emptiness. It's a lot of black and like nothing. It's the void. It's purely the void. And I get it. You may not want to stare at that all the time. However, solving these problems for space settlement will also improve the way that we solve these problems here on Earth for tiny homes and ultimately more efficient living. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into a tiny topic like I did. It is a topic that is near and dear to my heart and something that I've always kind of just wanted to make like a bit of a tangent video on like this where I discuss some of the benefits and some of the corollaries between space development, space settlement, and the tiny home movement of today and ultimately to a lesser extent the urbanization of humanity as a whole here over the last couple decades. So I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into this tiny topic of small spaces. 
This is something that has been near and dear to my heart for a long time now, and part of the reason why I ended up choosing to live in a studio apartment in the first place was to firsthand experience what it really means to have, frankly, no space. So if you like this intersection of space concepts with human problems, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And YouTube thinks you'll like this one. Until you watch it though, keep going beyond Earth orbit.